The following program is brought to you by your friends at Podcast One. There is a place that is spoken about only in whispers. A dark area that spawns the beginnings of urban legends. A place where anything can happen and usually does. During the light of day, it hides just outside of you. But when the sun goes down, spirits, creatures of the night, roam free. And things do go bump in the night. It is in every state and every country. And there is no escaping it. No matter how safe you feel behind your locked doors and latched windows. So we invite you to turn down the lights and turn up your radio while we join Dave Schrader and Tim Dennis, your hosts, on a journey into the darkness on the edge of town. Hello and welcome. You're tuned into a brand new week of the best in paranormal talk radio. This is Beyond the Darkness on a Supernatural News Parish Share Monday. Make sure you stay tuned because Tim and I have tips on how to make your bedroom life change like that. Really? Well, that's what I'm telling you. You got to listen to find out how, though. We're going to put the happy back in your Z's a little bit later. All right, uh, Tim. Mm hmm. We've got a lot of news to cover tonight. We've got some paranormal news uh, stories people have sent in to us. We've got paranormal encounters people have sent in to us. Where shall we begin tonight's journey? A haunted farm. A what? <laughs> a haunted farm. Are there are there ghost sheep that are bah, instead of boo? No? I would go with that. Yeah, okay. sure. What, sure. What's going on? Uh, a man is possessed by a demon on a haunted farm as animals suddenly drop dead in terrifying real life series true horror. Uh, the new docudrama will open with a disclaimer after showing real life footage and dramatized moments. Uh, the new Channel 4, this must be over, overseas because Channel 4 here is never this exciting. No, that's WCCO. Yeah. Never this CBS, exciting. CBS, very. Yeah. <laughs> they have an I team, but they don't do much. I more. team investigates how much ketchup is really in those packets at McDonald's. Yeah. The I team investigates. It's about as exciting as it gets. Dude. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the new Channel 4 show, True Horror, is set to be the most terrifying on TV, and it will have a warning for viewers before they delve into the spooky world of paranormal activity. Mm. The show will follow different people who have had horrific, horrific encounters. Dave, I almost read it like I was from the South. Horrific encounters with a ghost. By the way, I want. can I throw a disclaimer out here? Please. I don't hate people from the South. No. I have had probably now, I'd say, four or five communiques from people who think I hate people from the South. I don't. I love people. I love me some people from the South, Dave. As long as they stay in the South and far yeah, away from you? As long as you stay wow, away from are me. you yeah. hate-filled? Yeah. No, no, no. Not horrible, horrible. I love me some people from the South. Uh, this, the show will follow uh, different people who have had horrific encounters with ghosts, spirits, and poltergeists each with their own terrifying twists and turns. The first episode follows a young couple who try to make a new life for themselves in a small village, but are suddenly forced to experience some hair-raising moments with levitating objects and even possible demon possession. D -d 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 demon possession, Dave! Um, okay. Uh, the show will even open with a warning. Scenes of paranormal activity may disturb viewers. <laughs> no, really? Well, that's good. Yeah. I like that. It's a little bit of a jab, kind of a... You might want to be careful. Yeah. 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 Uh, so those of a more nervous constitution mm -hmm. can choose to switch over to something more palatable, like, I don't know, trading spaces or... or the I-Team investigates what is in tartar sauce. Mm. That's scary. Yeah. Cracking up in a cold one. Are you? Yeah. Oh, good. It's Sit almost back, Cinco relax. de Nino. It is almost Cinco de Nino, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What are we doing for that this year? I don't know. Are we going dry for that? We might have to. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do it every year. Ginger ale, I think. Takes, uh, takes the excitement out of it. I think ginger ale and crackers is what we'll do this or year. Or ginger ale and Jameson. Yeah. All right. Oh. Uh, and maybe some of your pain pills. I'm I just saying, we could yeah. really amp it up oh, this year. Oh, you want to? We could... I'll, I don't know, be possessed. I'll uh, I'll I'll skimp back for a couple of days. So we had a nice nice treasure trove of pills. Nice. All right. So yeah. was that was that it? No. No. Oh, no. there's no, you're more. Getting very impatient. Sorry. Right? Well, no. I just feel like I I interrupted the flow. I didn't know if that's because we were at the end of that story. Oh, we're or... getting excited about pain pills. Yeah. Uh, tonight's Duh. episode, or the, the I'm sorry, the episode to follow will follow Liz and Bill who move into a Ooh, quiet I love farm. Them. I know. Uh, who will move into a quiet farmhouse in the Welsh Hills, uh, where animals run free. 
Freely. And Artist Bill has studio in which to work. Oh, nice. Hmm. Uh, but their experience soon becomes more sinister when they encounter others dwelling in their haunted property. Dun, dun, dun! Uh, suddenly, things become incredibly ghoulish when animals start dying without reason. Uh, objects move around with no one holding them, and the farm starts to conjure weird visions for those who are living inside. Bill's art also changes. Well, doesn't at all. I mean, we all grow and change. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, starts becoming more dark and horrific. But is this just a reflection of his increasingly spooky surroundings, or has something taken a hold of him, Dave? Mm. Mm. The new show, which Channel 4 is aiming to be genuinely frightening, will show interviews with people who have been affected by paranormal activity and dramatized versions of those awful incidents. Though people are interviewed in the show, the dramatizations make this as close to a horror film as can be achieved, with moments of people being pulled from rooms, bedroom doors swinging open, and insane bodies in walls. Now, True Horror airs on Channel 4. It looks like uh, it uh, actually airs. Um, you can probably find it. It'll be it's, online. It's, it was on. It was actually on. BBC yeah, on uh, yeah, BBC America a few nights ago. Oh, so shoot, yeah. right, I'll have to I'll have to schedule that. So it's it's actually on on air on Thursday nights. All right. Yeah, we'll have to check that out. All right. Where are we off to next? Uh, next, we uh, ooh, this is an easy, uh, easy one, an interesting one. I meant to say, uh, spiritualists b- who believe Jesus was an alien from Venus will go on a pilgrimage to mm. Devon, not Devon. Devon no. is one of the Dudley boys. Uh, they're going to Devon. Uh, an an international spiritual organization believes Jesus was an extraterrestrial being from Venus, Venus, if you will. Dave uh, is planning its next pil- pilgrimage to a holy mountain in Devon. Evidently, that's where he made his home. Uh, the Aetherius Society was founded in late 1950s by George King, uh, who says a voice told him he was to be the earthly representative of an interplanetary parliament and not Funkadelic, Dave. No. Uh, cabbie Mr. King, who died in 1997, claims to have had an unusual encounter with Master Jesus at Holdstone Down near Combe Martin in 1958. The cult, which is de- described as a growing growing religion, I'm having a hard time saying this because I find it unbelievable, with a global following, now has groups in several countries around the world, and it is now organizing a pilgrimage to its special place on Saturday, July 28th for what is called Operation Prayer Power. Fight the power, kids. Fight the power. Uh, on its website, the society uh, says, sorry, I've got something in my eye. Uh, the uh, operation is a cosmic mission devised on George or by George King in which spiritual power is invoked through prayer and mantra and directed into a sp- specially designed f- physical container for later release. <laughs> hmm. Speaking in a previous documentary, Mr. King described the experience of meeting Jesus at the top of Holdstone Downhill. He said it was very, very windy at the top of Holdstone or Holdstone Down. As a matter of fact, it was quite dark by this time. Dimly out of the corner of my eye, I saw something in the sky. Uh, Then I saw a being which kind of appeared before me. I didn't see him walk up to me. I opened my eyes and he was there. He was very tall. He was dressed in a long robe. He had long brownish hair, Dave. Uh, There was so much radiance around the man. I knew, although he didn't tell me, I knew that he was Jesus and that he had come from the planet Venus. Venus, if you will. I didn't have to be told. I just knew this. I think it was some sort of telepathic impression that I picked up. There was no denying it, and there was no denying his presence. Mr. King said Jesus had arrived in a spacecraft, of course, and had sent power through himself to Mr. King and into the mountaintop at Holdstone Down, because why else would he be there? In the documentary, he said that he was told later by interplanetary sources that this mountain was holy. He continued, that's why we use Holdstone Down, because we really truly believe that it is holy. The society continues this tradition to this day, with July's meeting followed by a social event at a nearby venue. I bet you there's ice cream. According to the Aetherius Society, Holdstone Down is just one of those several holy mountains, with another being located in Devon at Yestor near, is it Okahampton? Sure, let's go with it. Another or other holy mountains across the globe include Castle Peak in the Rocky Mountains near Colorado. Bet you didn't know that was one. Mm -mm. 
uh, Mount Ramshead in New South Wales, Australia, Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, and Lenid de Eigel near La Houche in France. Bless you. Thank you. I uh, a little something caught in my yep, nose. You La yeah. all over. I La all over the keyboard. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to their website, the society's beliefs cover a near, a very wide spectrum, rather, of philosophy, religion, metaphysics, and the spiritual sciences. It is described as a growing religion with a global following that basically cherry picks from different belief systems from throughout the ages. They twist some details, add a new age focus, and anchor everything in the teachings of founder Mr. King, a yoga enthusiast turned author. On its official website, It states that its philosophy and teachings come largely from a highly advanced intelligence from the higher planes of Mars, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn, but members say they view the society as a spiritual brotherhood dedicated to healing and service to mankind. Well, at least they have a nice spin on it. Yeah. All right, where are we off to next? A toddler has traumatized his mom after talking to a sinister object down a plug hole but there's a, sin- a simple explanation. Not sinister, uh-huh. Dave. Simple. Sure. Yeah. It's a demon. It is a demon, Dave. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you figured that out. Mm-hmm. It's one of the most iconic and terrifying cinema lines. So, how would you feel if your cute as a button toddler were to look down the drain one day and say, Hi, Georgie? <laughs> Even if you have. Would it be wrong if I hit him with a plunger and no. shut the door and ran away? No, I would, I would put his face into the drain with a plunger. Yeah. Uh, maybe hit it two or three times and hope Mental to stick note, it in there. Yeah. Do not let him babysit. Hey, I'm all just right. all about security. Mm-hmm. That's all. Uh, even if you have nerves of steel or even if you haven't actually seen the whole film because you were too scared, these two words are bound to strike fear into your soul. That's what one mom was recently confronted with when her three-year-old daughter peered down the bathroom sink and uttered these very words. Hi, Georgie. <laughs> it's time to hit the kid with the holy water. We all float down here. Mm-hmm. Mom Bree took to Twitter to explain what happened, writing, My three-year-old just made me crap my pants when she looked down her bathroom sink and goes, Hi, Georgie. Uh, keep in mind, she's never seen a scary movie in her life, let alone it. We call it IT in the hood. That would even be scarier. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, for the uninitiated, these are the words which Pennywise the killer, nightmare-inducing clown, first says to little Georgie Denbro and, uh, while uh, lurking in a storm drain. Uh, needless to say, it does not end well for little Georgie. Uh, Bree from Ohio eventually plucked up, plucked up the courage to see who or what her daughter was talking to and then breathed the sigh of relief. It's Peppa's pig little brother, George. It's, see, there's a little pig in the drain. Oh, looking at it. gotcha. Uh, mm-hmm. Peppa Pig was trying to kill her baby brother, George, by shoving him down the drain? Yeah, yeah. Peppa's, Peppa's still pig. still seems like there's a sinister ending to this story, Tim. There could be, Dave. Uh, the whole exchange has both amused and struck a chord with others, with one person calling it precious and terrifying. Uh, the mom has since described the incident as the perfect summary for having children. I still say holy water should be involved, Dave. Just douse that child in holy water. She still stuck a pig down the drain and then had the nerve to say hi to it. All right, Georgie. Hi, Georgie. Just saying. Hey, you ready for the yearly biblical prophecy having to do with the rapture? We're all going to die tomorrow stuff? Mm, all right. Why not? April 23rd. Hey, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. That's um, it's today. What? Yeah. Today is the rapture? Yeah. Son of a gun. Are you uh, you, re- you ready? Are well, you ready at least I, I caught the end of uh, season finale of, of uh, Walking Dead. Oh, good for I you. I guess. Yeah. And, but I'm a day away from seeing the screening of Avengers Ooh. Infinity War. Ooh, we need Sucks. to hold on. Yeah. Sucks. Well, no, um, you know what? Let's be honest. In all truth, yeah. Tim, okay. you and I don't have to worry about the rapture. No. No. Where are we going anyways? Uh, not to where everybody else is going during the rapture. I'm really? Afraid. Yeah. Well, right. I guess you and I are going to go see the screening of Avengers Infinity War. Oh, good. We'll get to see it after all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, by the way, what did you think of Walking Dead? Uh, it'll be interesting. Yeah. It was a dark twist at the end I did not see coming. Yeah. Well, I, I read the comics, so I did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, biblical prophecy claims the rapture is coming April 23rd. This, according to a numerologist, 
You know, those numerologists are a bitch to play poker with. Yeah. They're always counting cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is the rapture finally here? One Christian numerologist says a biblical strongly suggests it. A, bi- a biblical sign strongly suggests it. I should read all the words. Yeah, try yeah. It. Don't just pick and choose. Yeah. Uh, David Mead tells the UK's Daily Express newspaper that on April 23rd, the sun and moon will be in Virgo, as will Jupiter. That must hurt. Uh, which will represent the Messiah. Oh. For a certain branch of evangelical Christianity, Revelation 12, uh, 1 and 2, as uh, the president would say, uh, describes the beginning of what is known as the rapture and the second coming of Christ. Oh, we're all getting it now, Dave. Uh, The passage reads, And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and her head a crown of twelve stars. That's a Statue of Liberty, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, She was pregnant and was crying out in... You didn't do it? No. Where were you? I was doing a thing for charity. I bet you were. No, charity Yeah, work. that's why she's pregnant. Uh, no, charity work. I had nothing oh, to do with it. I bet it was charity. I don't hear she's not that great looking. Uh, she was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains, and the agony was of uh, giving birth. Oh, yeah. So she's just ready to pop. Um, What number does this make now? It's not me. It's not yours? Not me. Oh, okay. Uh, in the passage, the woman is represented as Virgo. Mm-hmm. Well, she ain't a Virgo no more. She's having a kid. <laughs> I guess. Now when I'm done with her. What? Then, what? Right. Uh, according to me, the alignment represents the lion of the tribe of Judah, marking the rapture, the belief that Christ will bring the faithful into paradise prior to a period of tribulation on earth that precedes the end of time. I feel like I'm reading one of the lines from a Charlie Brown Christmas right now. Just like living in paradise. <laughs> That's a David Lee Roth song. We we just switched roles. Here I feel like I should be reading a line from a Charlie Brown Christmas and you're singing David Lee Roth. Well, uh, Mead says he believes the so-called planet X, which is also known as Nibiru, will appear above the sky on the April date, causing volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, and earthquakes. NASA repeatedly has said planet X is a hoax. Don't, yeah. be- don't believe it, folks. Yeah, because it, it hasn't shown up yet. Everybody no. knows it's, you know, I think since we started the show, uh, 30... Mm-hmm. 38, 39 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've heard that the end of the world as we know it and Nibiru will be there to herald it all in. Right. And besides, we know Jesus is chilling out on Venus right now at his oh, yeah. vacation home. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's got. He's, I hear he's a time sales, uh, timeshare salesman over there. He's got a great uh, pad over there. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you know this, but there's uh, holy water in the pool and cabana boys and everything. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, speaking to the Express, Mead described it as a unique once in a. Actually, there's cabana disciples. There's not cabana boys. Uh, speaking to the Express, Mead described it as a unique once in a century sign, exactly as depicted in the 12th chapter of Revelation. This is our time marker, is the quote. However, author Jonathan Sarfati, I almost said Safari, Sarfati, uh, remains skeptical. He told the Express, as usual with any astrology or Christian adaptations of it, one cherry picks the stars that fit the desired conclusion. There's nothing to suggest that April 23rd is a momentous date. For biblical prophecy, and Christians need to be careful about being drawn into such sensationalist claims. We won't know the day or the hour, so we should be prepared at all times. End quote. Mm. Ooh, we got to be prepared at all times? Well, yeah, because the whole thing is, you know, that's kind of the moral uh, compass of the whole deal for, for the rapture. If it were to occur, yeah. you just have to think about the thing that you're doing right now. Is that what you want Jesus to walk in on you doing? Oh, boy, I better get my you know, hand out of there. Like when he shows up, yeah. he shows up. So he knows all, sees wow. all. So I should put a towel over it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you don't want to be seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, this is, you know, it's kind of that same. Look at it this way. Okay. Don't do anything that you would be afraid Jesus or your grandma would walk in on you doing. Well, they've both walked in on it. I oh, mean, God. Yeah. I mean, my gra- they both thrown th- holy water on me, too, at the same Did time. It burn? And- yeah, boy, did it ever. Where are we off to next? Uh, this one says, in Argentina, a strange cle- creature has slain two dogs in Santa Fe. Oh, yes. This is the original story and the update, by the by, Tim, I sent to you. Somebody sent me this yeah. originally from a uh, uh, weird source, like from a weird uh, weird yeah. uh, news source, but yeah. we got it from a more... Reputable news source, and that's yeah. because they updated at the end. So you'll yeah. get it. So let's. Okay. This is the original story that was everybody wanted us to report on. Yeah, and then and then at the end of the story is the update. So go okay. for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the creature's shape is striking, as it has not been connected with any known. Uh, yeah, well, striking you know, shape it does have a long slender. Works shape. out. Yeah. Oh. 
I'm kind of getting excited now. Uh, the creature shape is striking as it has not been connected with any known animal. Residents of Totoris in the province of Santa Fe report that a creature is wandering the streets and has even slain two dogs. Oh, well, I can't get down with that. Mm-mm. No. Uh, the photograph taken and night and somewhat blurry has already made the rounds of social media to warn against the possible danger. An audio broadcast explains, well, there's, this is one too, uh, explains that the beast squared off against a pit bull and a German shepherd who lost the encounter and died. Uh, the creature subsequently vanished after that. Uh, there's a note here that could it be the infamous Aguara guazu mm. Mm. there's a big long name after that i'm not going to say because people just yeah, send me e- which send is australian for wine it is mm-hmm. i have you ever had it it's no. kind of like a pinot but not really really yeah uh an interesting situation our colleagues louise burgos and andre salvador salvador uh, have drawn our attention to the fact that the story has appeared in earlier instances the following is from Ovinus and Corrientes website. The image accompanying this article is used on others reporting similar situations that occurred elsewhere and must be taken with considerable skepticism. The April 6, 2018 issue of El Tribuno de Tucumán reports strange creature killed two dogs and terrified residents of Totoris or Santa Fe, adding a creature with terrifying features threatens residents of Totoris. A local resident states that the beast fought with two dogs, a pit bull and a German shepherd, killing them both. La Gazeta do Catiri in the Brazilian state of, I believe it's Sarara or Ciara, for uh, April 2018, reported that alleged apparition of the, oh, I can't pronounce it, I don't know what yeah. it is, terrifies mm-hmm. local residents. This arises from the same initial broadcasting of the image that has occurred through WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. Uh, the addendum to the it story. It did look good. The picture looked good. The original image that mm-hmm. they showed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but now that they've kind of shown you that this was just a, somebody took an image that existed and manipulated it, photoshopped it, and stuck it in. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Publication of the story. This is the addendum. Publication of the story on our Facebook page yielded an interesting crop of contributions, among which of those from Ariel Moderna, Moderna Luis Jorge Salinas, uh, Deandro Arime Saidar and Christian Vera Duarte stand out. Uh, Dentro Arime Saidar noted that the image matches that Are of a. Are you just making up names? No, it's. Arice Darjo no, it's Dentro Arime uh, Saidar. Sounds like you're doing some kind of Harry Potter chant on me over there. I am, actually. I've, I've just cast. Arice, dot day, chair. Just now. cast a spell on your uh, left foot. Actually, uh, notice that the images match that of a character appearing in the book Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. What did Azkaban. I just say? <laughs> no, by J.K. Rowling, named, is it Remus Lupin? Uh, showing him in the werewolf shape of the Forbidden Forest. See, that's why we don't repeat, or we don't report on all this when you, when you guys send it to us right away, because we don't believe you guys. Right. No, I'm just kidding. See what I did there? I yeah. turned it back on you guys. As Dendro Arime Sidar points out, uh, the image could have been modified or photoshopped. Christian Vera Duarte uh, shared the following image, which affords a better view of the photo montage. Okay, now when you see it, you see where it's been manipulated right. according to the drawing, and it looks almost identical. Yep. And it says our thanks to friends for making us aware of the media hoax involved. So there you go. I see what you're saying, though. Yeah. yeah, it is cool looking shot. But yeah, yeah. we've uh, on that one. You know, it came in midweek. Everybody's like, "You got to report on it." We're like, "Hey, the mm-hmm. uh, you know, we're not. It's not Monday yet. We can't report on it." And you yeah. know, here it is. Boom, we got an update. It's it showed up. Everybody was hearing how it killed dogs. No, no, no. A little bit of a hoax. Yeah, a little bit of. All right, where are we off to next? Uh, six children collapse after being possessed by spirits while attending school in Colombia, with one uncontrollable victim yelling, "I will kill them all." Yikes. I yelled that in the lunchroom once when we ran out of lasagna. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, footage taken after the children collapse shows two being carried by adults. A mother of one girl said that her child felt something make a sound inside her body. That's probably a hungry tummy. Huh? I'm guessing we all have that too. Uh, reports suggest that parents of the children are asking a local church for spiritual help. 
The parents of six children who suddenly collapsed after having fits at school are pleading for spiritual help from the church after claiming they were possessed. In footage taken after the children fainted, the limp body of a girl in school uniform can be seen carried by an adult as as a crowd looks on. Another girl can be seen jumping and screaming as she is held back by an adult. Uh, Adalmus Movil, mother of one of the girls affected, said of the daughter, Suddenly she felt something, made a sound inside her body. She sat down and told her classmate, I felt sick. Or I feel sick, rather. Suddenly she felt a blow to her chest and she fell onto the floor. She was shouting and started swearing, saying, I will kill them. Oh, nice girl. Mm -hmm. Uh, The bizarre incident took place in a school in the small town of Palomino in the Dabula Municipality, (laughs) it's easy to talk, of the Colombian Department of La Guajira. Uh, Reports suggest that the six students fainted without warning and the parents of the children did not know the cause. Local media... Where where did this take place? La Guajira. How do you spell that? G-U-A... Wait, wait, you spell La with a G? La. Okay. L-A... I'm G- just giving you Guajira. All right. G- I, G-U-A? La, L-A, Guajira, G-U-A, J-I-R-A. Guajira. The J is an H sound in Latino provinces. Oh, that's interesting. Guajira. Could it be this? I'm just throwing it out there. Um, it's 10 o'clock at night, and it's 80 degrees there right now. Could it be maybe they don't have the best air ventilation in that room? You're Maybe, saying it's a large fart. Uh, what? <laughs> it's a large fart. Is that what no, you? No, I'm just oh. saying. But you know, when you're when you're a bunch of students crammed in a hot room, mm-hmm. and who knows? Maybe you had some uh, tainted milk at lunch, mm-hmm. and then that hot room's just kind of bubbling and boiling it up, churning it up. Mm-hmm. Today's I don't know mini donuts and churros. Maybe they they just weren't finished enough. <laughs> maybe they got some of that. Maybe they got some of that tainted romaine lettuce we've been passing around oh, in the United States. That's good stuff. though. Yeah. yeah, but seriously, uh, it's like 10 o'clock at night uh, during our recording session right now. Mm-hmm. It's 10 o'clock at night, and it's 80 degrees there with 81% humidity at 10 o'clock at night. I'm just saying, there could be a natural explanation for why kids are blacking out in school. Yeah, it could be. I don't mean to rain on your uh, paranormal parade. No, I don't. Yeah. I, I'm, hey, I'm looking at the sense of it all. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm following you. I'm mm-hmm. with you. Uh, reports suggest that six students fainted without warning, and the parents of the children do not know the cause. How, Local- how many uh, p- passed out with warning? Hey, 100. hey, I'm going to pass out over here. <laughs> Quite a few, yeah. I'm sure. How many people warn you that they're going to go down? I do. I mean, pass out. Oh, oh, go, oh pass out. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, I warn everyone when I go down. Mm. Yeah. It's a, it's a scene. Uh, local media claim that the sudden fainting of the children could be down to them being possessed by spirits. Reports also suggest that the parents of the affected children are asking the local church for spiritual help. Or an air conditioner. No, oh, that would help too. But it is unclear if this means they plan to conduct an exorcism. It is also unclear if the children were given medical attention after fainting or if they have now returned to normal health. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we wish them all well, whatever the cause. Milk. Don't eat romaine Milky. lettuce. Did you see these news stories? Milky lettuce. No, bad romaine is out no, there. No, I know it's like Woodstock. I went Don't to, eat the brown romaine. I went to school with bad romaine. Did you? Yes, he was terrible. Is he a rapper? He took, Back took in my Blaine, Minnesota. Took my lunch money for a year. All right. Yeah. Just saying. Oh, are we on to the next story? Well, I'd like yeah. to be. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. An infamous and iconic Nessie photo is now celebrating its anniversary, Dave. Hey! Happy anniversary. It's its anniversary. Yeah, it was on Saturday this last week. Yeah, Saturday yeah. of this mm-hmm. last week. It marked the 84th anniversary of the publication of one of the most infamous and iconic paranormal photo- photos of all mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Photos, Dave. It's one of them, their photographs. Oh, photographs. They're never going to catch on. No. Uh, known simply as the surgeon's photograph, the legendary image purportedly shows the long neck of the Loch Ness Monster emerging from the waters of its home in Scotland. Appearing as the headline story in the British newspaper, The Daily Mail, on April 21st of 1934, the image became something of a sensation. Quickly spreading all over the world is proof that a monster of some kind lurked in Loch Ness. The origin of the somewhat odd name for the photo comes from the fact that it was submitted to the newspaper by a doctor 
who did not want his name associated with the jaw-dropping image, although his identity was later revealed, as you'll soon learn, because we're about to give it to you, if you know what I mean. Akin to the Patterson-Gimlin film of Bigfoot lore, the tantalizing photo catapulted the Loch Ness Monster into the public zeitgeist. That's the first time I've used that in a long time. And became the subject of feverish analysis and considerable debate for decades. And after all those years, it seems that the... Thank God that says parties. I thought it said something else. Behind the now famous photo finally decided that they wanted credit for their historic work. As in the 1990s, it was revealed that the image had been an elaborate hoax. The story behind the faking of the photo is nearly as fantastic as the image itself, involving a disgruntled big game hunter who had been tasked to find Nessie, but fell short and was mocked by the Daily Mail. In turn, Uh (laughs) and that's exactly how it went. That's real audio, by the way. In turn, he enlisted a sculptor to create a model of the creature's upper torso, affixed it to a toy submarine, and photographed the faux creature in Loch Ness. At Loch Ness, now there's no T there. <laughs> is that near Illinois? Yes, it is. It's near Illinois. Or, or close to the Arkansas border. Exactly. At just the right angle to make it appear monstrous. I've done that many a night. Uh, however, despite being thoroughly debunked, it would appear that the impact of the surgeon's photo was hardly diminished as it remains the proverbial go-to image whenever one imagines Nessie or is looking for a visual representation of the creature in the media. Hmm. Yeah. Well, happy anniversary, fake picture of Nessie. We love you. <laughs> and speaking of things we love, how about True Car, Tim? Oh, we love True Car. Here's some useful car tips you may not be aware of. Did you know that a coffee filter and a little bit of olive oil can clean your interior, Tim? Mm -hmm. Did you know that by removing the dead bodies in your trunk will improve your gas mileage? It will? Yes, and you can place your key fob to your chin to scratch it, Tim. Really? Well, if you get an itch right there, it's just... Just you found just right, yeah, one of these right there. Oh, right there. Huh. Really helpful on that. Weird too. Weird, huh. right? Okay. Well, here's another tip that you uh, might not be aware of, Tim. But True Car also helps people get used cars. Ooh. That's right. True Car. That's not just for those snobby buying new car people. Tim. That's right. Right. With their certified dealer network and nationwide inventory of one million used cars, Tim. One million. One million. Yes, one million. I said that. Why do you always ask me in a questioning tone? I don't know. I'm You're going to enjoy way. real pricing on actual inventory, and it's a simpler buying experience. So if you are like Tim and I, simple. This is the way to go. Whether you buy new or used, and with True Car, users can see what others have paid, so they know if they're getting a good deal before buying. They're also more likely to enjoy a faster car buying experience by connecting with True Car certified dealers. So when you're ready to buy that newer used car, and many of you already have, True Car is the place you need to go. Enjoy a more confident car buying experience. TrueCar.com. Some features are not available in all states. But you know what is available in all states? All 50? 51 if you count Puerto Rico, Tim. Well, we should. Beyond the darkness, it's available. So is True Crime Tuesday, oh, which yeah. is brand new tomorrow. Oh, yes. Go subscribe to it. Hurry up. Get on the bandwagon. Go to darknessradio.com. Click on the True Crime Tuesday banner. Subscribe now and be a part of our world for the best in True Crime Talk Radio. It is the single best use of $5 you're going to find all month long, Tim. I can't think of anything. No, you can't even get good weed for 5 bucks anymore. So That's why not right. just sink it into our show and enjoy yourselves. Five bucks gets you four brand new spanking episodes. And once in a while, like this week, we threw in an extra classic episode yep. that we, we really loved. And I thought that was a great one. And especially it's timely with the uh, It's Me, Ed Edwards uh, documentary, six-part series that's on TV. Mm-hmm. We we broke this story years ago on our show. Yep. And now it's on the cover of People magazine. And it's free. Did I mention that, Tim? You did. That episode's free. So if all of you are wondering what our true crime stories sound like, go check out darknessradio.com. Click on the True Crime Tuesday banner. You can check it out. We've got, I think, two episodes that are free on there for you just to listen to. If you like it, subscribe for five bucks a month. It'll get you four brand new episodes, and it'll get you some of the extras and bonus episodes. And we're going to throw up some bonus, maybe once a month, we'll throw up a bonus favorite classic episode that's like years and years old. Yeah, if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You kids. So check it out, (laughs) darknessradio.com. Click on the True Crime Tuesday banner and subscribe now. Where shall we go next in the world of supernatural news? Australia. 
That that theme's not working for me. No, it's not. It's yeah, not. No. Yeah, it's it's not really supernatural news. It doesn't really hit home. No, no, it doesn't have the sting we're looking for. Yeah. All right. Uh, we go to Australia, Dave, where the cops are sharing an eerie video. I don't know if it's eerie. Crikey, but... have a look at this. Yeah, it's a rougarou. I'm looking at it, and it's uh-huh. a it's a ghost janitor, Dave, throwing what? throwing a broom. <laughs> what? I think he's just throwing. He's going on strike. I think after all those years of being a ghost janitor, I think he's had it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, members of a police department in Australia were left sh- uh, scratching their head after spotting some potential ghostly activity captured via their CCTV system. Posting the video to their Facebook page, the New South Wales Police Force explained that a garage door in their parking lot had been inexplicably left open despite the area not being used for days. Curious as to what or who may have been responsible for the oversight. Officers examined the security camera footage from the lot and were surprised to find that the door had actually opened on its own. And in a chilling culmination to the weird scene, a broom can be seen flying out of the garage seemingly propelled by an unseen force. According to the cops, they've enlisted, not unlisted, but enlisted a technician to examine what appears to be a faulty door and quip that the dealing that they're dealing with the possessed broom in a, is a job best handled by the Ghostbusters. Lest one... They know those guys aren't real, right? I don't think they do. Nor no. those gals depending on which iteration you watch. Yeah, although they they call them ghost dusters. Dave. Oh, did wink, they? Oh, wink, wink, that nudge, sounds, nudge. Uh, yeah. Sexist. Yeah, it does. Uh, lest one think that the video was merely a Friday the 13th joke by the police department, they assured the public that the footage was genuine and that no shenanigans were at work on their part. That's right, no shenanigans on our part. All None right. whatsoever. Where are we off to next? We... Hick up first, and then we head over okay. to. I've had the worst. Cinco de Nino starting early. I've had the worst problem with hiccups lately. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, it's that uh, alien baby trying to come out of my stomach. Uh, we're going to uh, an English castle where we're going to watch a uh, a drone filming a ghost night. You know, drones are are all the rage lately, Dave. People yeah. like to film lots of things with their drones, dr- mm-hmm. and they're getting cheaper and cheaper by the day. Mm. Well, a drone enthusiast in England believes that he may have captured footage of a ghost riding a horse at a historic castle in England. Hello, what's this? The odd anomaly was filmed by a man named Thomas Arnold as he was testing out his new drone at Berkeley Castle in the English countryside of Gloucestershire. Or sure. It's Gloucestershire, Dave. That's right. I don't want more emails. You know how you I got it right? It. Because you're sure. It's because Gloucestershire. I'm, See? Right? That's yep. the way you learn. Yep. Uh, during, can you tell I'm traumatized? Mm-hmm. Uh, during the flight, he says his controls suddenly lost contact with the drone for about 10 seconds, and so Arnold engaged in emergency response, which brought the device back to him. The technical difficulty wasn't anything particularly noteworthy to Arnold until he later looked at the footage from the drone and spotted something truly strange in a rather remarkable piece of video. What appears to be a white figure can be seen swiftly moving through the courtyard of the castle. Actual audio, by the way. Noting that there was no... <laughs> noting that there on, was, <laughs> Wow, he talks. Mm-hmm. Noting that there were no chimneys producing smoke in the area, and the direction of the wind seemingly could not have been or could not have produced the oddity, Arnold suspects that the drone may have filmed a genuine ghost. And in light of the location and the behavior of the potential apparition, uh, he posited that perhaps this was the spirit of a horseman of some kind of the apocalypse, Dave, of Ooh. the apocalypse, uh, which would have. Was it uh, war, pestilence, famine, death, or um, bad hair day? Cotton candy. Oh. It was the horseman of cotton candy, yeah. Dave. It's a softer one. They have one of Charmin, too, but uh, that one wasn't available that day. Uh, which could uh, actually constitute a pair of ghosts, in a sense, according to this article. Uh, a more skeptical stance on the strangeness would likely attribute it to a technical malfunction that occurred uh, due to the drone disconnecting from its control. Hmm. There you go. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. I know we're running into the end here, Tim, and I had to throw this story to you because I know you're paranoid enough about AI taking over the world 
you know, and destroying us. I'm going to preface this, Dave. And I, Terminators uh, blowing us up I, via Skynet. I was uh, I was deeply alarmed this week. I almost brought this item in for you, but I thought you you might think that I was overly paranoid. I was at my local YMCA. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a uh, there's a little bookmobile thing going on now. <laughs> there is a children's book sitting there, Dave. I almost mm-hmm. purchased it. Mm-hmm. It simply had the title "Artificial Intelligence." Oh, yeah. It was a propaganda machine, Dave, about artificial intelligence and how it's good for us, Dave. It is, Tim. No, no, Dave. I'm all it was. The pod bay doors, Tim. All it was mm-hmm. was a 30 page propaganda booklet telling our children about how great artificial intelligence is, Dave. Dude. How great it's going to be to be under the master's thumb, Dave. Yes, it's because that's what's going to save us from the zombie apocalypse. Oh, Dave. It's true. No, oh, Dave. Mm hmm. Oh, Dave. So it's not Skynet you necessarily have to worry about, Tim. It might be Waternet. Dave, when they stick their little metallic thumbs through your eye sockets and pry your skull oh, apart. That'd be helpful because I get those pressure headaches. And, oh, oh I, you know, my wife is always afraid she's going to pop my oh, eyeball out. Dave. I'm like, suck it up, buttercup. When Push end, further. When the end comes, uh huh, you're going to wish you would have had this little booklet in front of you. Knowing that the propaganda you said was no good. Yeah. Knowing that you could have got a leg up on this deal. You could have read into it. You could have read between the lines. I'm getting a leg up. Nobody wants to be near me. Maybe that's the key to defeating Mm -hmm. these bastards. Just saying. All right. Uh, The story you uh, sent me, army researchers are developing a self-aware. Oh, son of a bitch. Doom, 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 doom. Should I try to pull that up? It's been a while since we've... uh... Had some uh, background music for this kind of story, Tim. You want me to? I can. I can put it right here. You don't need to do the rinky dink phone. I got it right here. <laughs> pardon me. The rinky dink phone to the. the pardon. You know, pardon I've gotten me? some complaints from people. They're like, "What do you? What do you do? You have a camel that's in the background just humming that? Is that what that is? That I had wow. one guy say that to me. Hmm. I'm like, no, Dave. Dave thinks that that's that's technology. That's it's, high uh, it technology. Is. It is. It's the good stuff. It's, I, I told him no. It's high quality. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. don't, do that. don't that, it's like it's don't. like you're there. It's like surround sound. Oh, don't. Do that. No, it's right, not. Read surround. your story. Go. I got you. Oh, God. I don't, got your back. No, don't. Here. Look. It's right here. It's right here. Look. Here. It's right here. Just oh, put the phone down. Tough guy. Put, put the phone down. Man. All right. It's right here. All right, Tim. Let's start off the story. We no longer have to fear the Actually, skies this... or the land, Tim. It's the water that's about to get scary as oh, hell. Jesus. Army researchers are developing a self-aware robot, Squid, you can 3D print in the field. Well, because it's not easy enough to get a hold of these bastards. In case you weren't already terrified of robots, and we aren't, that can jump over walls, fly, or crawl, Army researchers are developing your next nightmare, a robot Squid! I'm letting the music build underneath you, Tim. A robot Squid, you say? And they want soldiers to be able to use 3D printers to make them on the battlefield, Dave. Oh, wonderful! Wait, on the battlefield? Uh, How often are squid uh, helpful on the battlefield? Because if I'm going to create some, I'm going to make like a 3D printed T-Rex. That seems like it would be much more helpful on the field of battle. Not a squid who's going to just kind of lay there and flop. This isn't. This is the original one. This isn't the one from T two. Yeah, this isn't the good one. Let's get the one from T two. Yeah. On. Let's 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 make this correction real quick. I'm 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 dismayed, in all honesty, Tim. Dismayed that they're deciding that for war, we need to create AI squid. Does it squirt black ink out at you when it's mad? Squirt something else when it's happy. Huh? <clears throat> yeah. I'm not cleaning it up. No. Uh-huh. It's salty, evidently. It's from the ocean. Here's the deal, Dave. They're making this bastard in our backyard. My backyard? I don't have much of one. Actually, they're making it right down where I get my foot fixed. Holy Uh cow. Uh-oh. The U.S. Army Research Laboratory and the University of Minnesota are developing materials that can be 3D printed based on the flexibility and nimbleness of invertebrates, such as squid, according to an ARL release. They're making it at the U of M, Dave. (laughs) I will not be in any of the lakes around here, ever. Traditional materials are too rigid and limit certain types of movement that robots might require to get into confined and restricted spaces, said Ed Habtour, an ARL researcher. 
That's why they use the squid, Dave. So they can get into the crack of your ass and do weird stuff. What? That, yeah, the robot squid are going to get in your ass, Dave. You know, all you got to do is buy me dinner. Oh, is that it? I'm easy. What can I say? Huh. The prototypes that Habtour and fellow ARL researchers developed gave 3D printers actuators three times the movement as what's been tested before. The material that they've used in their testing will bend in any direction when hit with electricity, Dave. Ooh. In other words, they, they bend. Mm-hmm. They bend when excited. In the initial phase of the project, our team began by investigating new methods for emulating the locomotion of invertebrates, Dave. Come on, Tim. Do the locomotion with me. Oh, I can't. Said Michael McAlpine, a professor at the University of Minnesota. Traitor. You big traitor. That helped researchers learn how to apply the natural movement of, of invertebrates like squid to produce high-bending motions without skeletal support. According to McAlpine. Because the material doesn't have to be dried, heated, or assembled, it would require little training and could be used for printable robots that soldiers could make and use whenever and wherever they needed. If we can understand these interactions, then we can use those insights to fabricate dynamic structures and flexible robots, which are designed to be self-aware, self-sensing, and capable of adjusting their morphologies and properties in real time to adapt to a myriad of external and internal conditions! Good God! Yeah. But when you're sitting on the old hopper and you hear the bloop, bloop, in the toilet, it could be coming up for you. Squid paws. Normally I don't have anything coming up for me. It's kind of encouraging. So, go on. The material is still in early developmental stages, so don't expect to see a robot squid in the foxhole next to you tomorrow. Good. But it could happen in any day! I don't know, but it will. It could be not tomorrow, but like the day after tomorrow. Oh, these sons of bitches. <laughs> and they're in my backyard! I told you I would be back, Tim. I can't take it. I'm going to burn that goddamn university to the ground. Wow. That's Tim, what I'm going to do. In this day and age, don't be saying that out loud. Can of gas and a handful of matches. No, Tim, Tim, bad. Juju, what? don't talk oh. like that in, in today's society. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go over there for my appointment next week, and I can't. No, Tim. Can't All right, move on. What's our, is there oh. any more to this story? No, it's it's done. All right, what the what's going on next? Oh. Is this our final story? Uh, this is our final story. Okay. Do I need the theme again? No. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the U.S. government accidentally sends a strange conspiracy theory file describing remote mind control and forced memory blanking, Dave. Mm-hmm. It was a mistake. It was fiction. Was it? They were just having some fun. Are they? And, you know, kids will be kids. Will they? <laughs> the U.S. government may have been secretly collecting documents on remote mind control and forced memory blanking. Mm-hmm. Accidentally leaked files suggest... A reporter claims to have been mysteriously sent the proof after filing a request for a different set of information. In what sounds like a plot from the X-Files, a revealed research into bizarre psychoelectronic weaponry. Whoops. Sorry. Uh, these claim to use electromagnetic forces to achieve their aims, including inducing intense pain, itching, and even rigor mortis. But don't worry about it, kids. What? They weren't really doing anything wrong. Mail Online has contacted the party's parties. There's two of them involved to verify the claims, but has yet to receive a response. Ooh, there's a big diagram here that tells, oh my gosh, one of the things they did here, Dave, Mm -hmm. special attention to genital area, itching, forced orgasm, and intense pain. Mm. That was one of the things they did to people. Another one was- Allegedly. Allegedly. They also did, oh my goodness, right along the leg area. Hmm? Right, right in the uh, deep inner thighs. Oh, intense general pain or hot needles push deep into flesh sensation. Also, wild flailing, sometimes followed by short periods of rigor mortis. Just short, short periods. Yeah, short. Short period. periods of rigor mortis between your legs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happens on occasion, Tim. <laughs> It'll happen. Uh-huh. Uh, the documents in question were sent to Curtis Waltman, a journalist working for Boston nonprofit Muckrock. 
uh, which is dedicated to helping people make Freedom of Information Act requests to government bodies. He was investigating far-left activist Antifa and the white supremacist groups that it opposes when he claims to have made the bizarre discovery. They were included in material by uh, provided by Washington State Fusion Center, a Department of Homeland Security affiliate that provides information sharing and analysis. It remits or its remit includes counterterrorism, detecting criminal activity, disaster planning, cybersecurity, and other threat assessments. Among the expected records includes emails, intelligence briefings, and bulletins was a compressed file labeled EM Effects on Human Body. That according to Mr. Waltman. Writing in his article on the subject, he said, it's entirely unclear how this ended up in its release or in this release. It could have been meant for another release. It could have been gathered for an upcoming WSFC report, or it could even be from the personal files of an intelligence officer that somehow got mixed up in the release. The files detail a number of proposed devices and techniques that aim to manipulate the human mind. Oh my. They range from the implausible, like a strange technique for microwave hearing, to the potentially possible, including remote brain mapping, which would let third parties monitor your thoughts. It's unclear exactly where some of the images in the release come from, he says, but some appear to have been part of the article in Nexus Magazine, an Australian publication that covers alternative news and conspiracy theories. It reported on a legal case brought by the John St. Clair Kiwi against the NSA, in which it was claimed that the security agency had the ability to assassinate U.S. citizens covertly or run covert psychological control operations. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, to cause subjects to be diagnosed with ill mental health. Another comes from a person named Supratik Saha, uh, whose documents say is a software engineer. The presence of these records doesn't mean that the U.S. government is directly working on such projects or that they are anything more than thought experiments. However, it does seem to suggest someone is taking them seriously enough to gather the information in the first place. Speaking to Mail Online, Nigel Watson, author of the Haynes UFO Investigations Manual, says, In the past, the CIA conducted Project MKUltra, which featured numerous mind control projects. Most of them involved the use of drugs like LSD for interrogation purposes or for the purpose of mind control. Millions of dollars poured into the project with few practical results. The information relates to similar mind control experiments using electromagnetic fields. They have been public for several years, and I think they are related. They are related to uh, such weapons and what they might do, rather than existing weapons that can cause such effects. They certainly add to the paranoia of conspiracy theorists who believe these and harp weapons are used to create UFO sightings and make people believe that they have been abducted. So there you go. That's it, huh? That's it. All right. That's it for Supernatural News. Stay tuned. Your paranormal encounters are next. And as promised, Tim and I are going to tell you how to save things in the bedroom. We may even be saving lives tonight, Tim, with something I have to share. We'll talk about that when we return to the best in Paranormal Talk Radio. This is Beyond the Darkness. New to Podcast One, The Producer's Guide with Todd Garner. Join Todd as he interviews the biggest names in Hollywood, like Adam Sandler. We drove down there and my brother's like, do you have your material? I said, what do you mean? Rebel Wilson. I couldn't interact with these people, so I put on this American accent and <laughs> pretended to be American. And Isla Fisher. I just wrote a passionate letter explaining how much I wanted to be a clown, begging them to accept me. Download new episodes of The Producer's Guide with Todd Garner every Thursday on PodcastOne.com the Podcast One app, or Apple Podcasts. Hey, this is Chris Jericho inviting you to the first ever Rock and Wrestling Rager at Sea. Picture this. Rock and roll, wrestling, comedy, live podcasting, all on the open ocean from October 27th to the 31st, 2018 from Miami to Nassau. I'm bringing Hall of Fame wrestlers, some of the greatest rock and roll bands on the planet, and putting the first wrestling ring on a cruise ship ever. Don't be a stupid idiot. Make the list. Check us out at ChrisJerichoCruise.com. Beyond the darkness. Hello, welcome back to the best in paranormal talk radio. What's that? 
you wish you could meet Dave and Tim somewhere this year? You wish you could shake our hand and be in the glorious presence that is beyond the darkness? All right. We've heard you. We're going to make ourselves available. Starting off here in June, Tim, June, I'm going to be at the March with the Aliens exploring the Unknown Ancient Aliens program that's going to be taking place in Salt Lake City. For tickets and information, call 385-549-2181, 385-549-2181, or visit www.universalpromotionservices.com. You can find it on Facebook at Alien March. I'll be there along with uh, the Fire in the Sky guy, Travis Walton, Tim. Cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman will be there. Alien Dave will be on hand. Hmm. Our good friend John Zaffis will be there. Greg Lawson, your buddy Dave Schrader, and heading up the event from Expedition Unknown, Josh Gates will be on site, Tim. Really? How exciting is that? June 9th, 2018. Again, check it out. Give them a call, 385-549-2181, or go check out Darkness Events. Dot com darkness events dot com in june tim yeah i will also be in australia i'm going down under mate the 16th and 17th of june i'll be at the q station in manly the quarantine station tim we're gonna have a conference there we're going to investigate we're going to have a gay old time we'll have a gay old time so check that out that's where i'm gonna be and Um, At the end of June, Tim, you and I are going to be together in Tombstone, Arizona at the 25th anniversary of the movie Tombstone. So you can find information. Just go to Facebook. Look up 25th anniversary of Tombstone, Mm -hmm. the movie. And there's all kinds of events. Frank Stallone is going to be on site. Michael Bean, the actor, is going to be on site. Some of the other actors, stunt people, set designers are going to be there. You and I get to investigate, and and, um, we get to broadcast from a haunted hotel and from the birdcage. How's that? Pretty cool? I don't think the birdcage is part of it anymore. In fact... what? Nope. Uh, Lincoln got a hold of me. What's going on? In fact, let me pull it up real quick here. Lincoln got a hold of me. The birdcage is not a part of it anymore. It is... Yes. I know the the Buford... What is it? The Buford, Buford, right. The hotel. Buford house. Uh But it is the... It's the Buford House and the Crystal Palace. Oh, very cool. Yeah, the Crystal Palace is the other part of it. So that's uh, that's going to be some of the fun stuff we've got going on in June. So you can check that out. And then, of course, don't forget Michigan Paracon. Tim and I will be at that in uh, Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, August 23rd through the 25th. And uh, rounding out our year, Tim, we're going to be on the Rock and Wrestling Rager Cruise, the Chris Jericho Cruise. Yep. And they're adding people left and right. Dude, but this, you and I are the only paranormal contingent aboard this ship for Halloween. This is the biggest vacation you'll ever be on in your life. I'm it's very cool. You. They've got I'm, music. And I'm speaking to everybody here. Yeah, they've got music. They've got comedy. They've got uh, special guests like Diamond Dallas Page, Mick Foley, Ricky the uh, Dragon Steamboat, Ray Mysterio, Raven. Uh, Tim and Dave from Darkness Radio are going to be there. Beyond the Darkness will be there. We'll be recording our shows aboard the ship. And imagine this. Mm-hmm. 20-man tournament, Ring of Honor tournament at sea. The winner gets a shot at the Ring of Honor Heavyweight Championship. All of Bullet Club is going to be there. And Tim and I are taking them all on. No, all no, comers. Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No, no. Well, I, we, we've been playing up this fake leg injury of yours long <laughs> enough, Tim. We're going to use the cast. The, We're going to go Cowboy Bob Orton on him. Yeah, that's right. The The hottest faction in wrestling, the Bullet Club will be there. Cody Rhodes will be there. The whole deal will be there. It is the place to be this October. But that's not why you should go. You should go because Tim and I are going to be there. Yeah. And we're going to be the Halloween guys. We're going to be the guys bringing the scary to the cruise. I think Absolutely. we have uh, I think we have a presentation every day of the cruise. Yeah. So four days we get to be at sea and see awesome places. So check that out. All the information is at darknessevents.com. Oh, but Dave, one more thing. What? One more no, thing. No, we've got stories to no, read. No, one more thing, Dave. What? This Saturday. Uh-huh. At the uh, Hopkins, Hopkins American Legion. Sure. IWI. IWI? 730. Okay. 
big card. Big card? A steel steel chair match uh-huh. between the, I like to call him the ex-con Damian Graves, mm-hmm. and uh, the insane prodigy Sterling Bond. Nice. Steel chair match. That's our, our main event over there at uh, the Bond's Hopkins. Violent. Why can't you guys have like a cuddle match? I put it together. Can you Maybe just like a, a spooning match? match? Um, Whoever no. the loser is has to spoon with you? Uh, no, that would be awkward and uh, not very um, action-packed. Yeah. Uh, 7.30 is the uh, start time over there at the Hopkins American Legion. Tickets are available at the door. 12 bucks for adults, 8 bucks for kids. Uh, be sure to uh, come out and, uh, and join me and the gang out there at IWI. All right. Well, you heard him. If you don't go, karma's going to get you. What? I didn't say that. I am. I'm putting it out there. Oh. Let's do some stories. Listeners have been sending in their stories, Tim. Here's one from Holland. Hmm. Holland, you say? Salutations, Dave and Tim. Well, I'm not sure that's a Hollish. That's not accent. a is that how you, Hollish. Yeah, the Hollish. Hollish is in Queens. R- what? No, that's Hollis, Tim. Oh, yeah. Oh, if if you're from Holland, wouldn't you be Hollish? <laughs> no, that's Hollow, Dave. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, here's from the Hollow. <clears throat> I've been meaning to type out my tale for a while, but I've never found the peace and quiet for it. This is a story about something that happened to me a long time ago. I could not have been older than 10, as I'm in my 30s now. That probably was around the late 90s. Yay. I did math, it says, Tim. Yay. Now he gives us the little brackets and tells us to insert back in time effect here. Let me see if I have one. When I was a young boy, my bed was in the opposite corner of the room, facing the doorway. In front of my bed was a carpet with a road and a little township printed upon it. I used to drive little toy cars around on it. I recall waking up that night to an eerie feeling and noises coming from next to my bed. Scratching, scurrying, squeaking of toy wheels. I sat up straight, trying to get my bearings, and stared in the dark at the carpet. I swear I could see my cars move on their own flabbergasted i sat there thinking this this couldn't be true but there they were moving back and forth over the roads i slowly looked up at the doorway which was open for some reason i I never sleep with the door open as my door is directly in front of a staircase and i didn't like looking down that staircase or the scare taste tim for some inexplicable reason i noticed that the dim light coming from the front door downstairs was blocked. Part of the doorway was darker. I could make out a silhouette of a person wearing a long coat and a large brimmed hat. The very second I realized what I was looking at, I was overcome with terror and screamed at the top of my lungs, Mom! Dad! Wake up! As I backed up in the corner facing the doorway. Seconds later, my parents' bedroom light came on, and they opened their door. As the light lit up the hallway, the silhouette dissipated, and nothing was left. I sat there, terrified, with my toy car scattered across the carpet. My mother asked, what was wrong? Why was I screaming? I didn't know what to say. I I pointed at my cars and told her that they were moving on their own, and that a man was standing in my doorway. She soothed me and calmed me back down to a state where I was able to sleep again. I agreed that she could not stay with me all night and let her go back to her own room. Selfish mom, Tim. I know, Selfish. Right? Mother of the year. She soothed me and calmed me back down to a state where I was able to sleep. When she got back in bed with my father, I overheard her asking if he recalled my door being open when they went to bed. They both agreed that it was closed, and they mumbled about it for a while. I slowly fell asleep after an hour or so of listening to them mumbling. This occurrence has stayed with me the rest of my life. I believe now that I have experienced the hat man phenomena. Phenomena. P.S. I love the show. With kind regards, Timothy Smits from the Netherlands, Tim. I found his time travel. Oh, so he's from, uh, he's from the Netherlands, Tim. So he speaks Nevi. Oh, Nevi. Yeah, Nevi. Nevi is that big monster over there in no, Loch Ness. No, no, Nessie. 
Oh, silly goose. You got a little time travel music? Let me hear what it sounds it's, like. It's the time travel effect. You ready? Okay. Okay. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Dear Dave. Mm-hmm. Ouch. Presently, I'm reading a book called Trucker Ghost Stories by a lady named Annie Wilder. Never heard of her. I read a story about a guy who 69 Plymouth Fury broke down on him. He said 69. And some hippie guy came out of nowhere and fixed it for him. I got to the end of the story and wow, it was you, Dave. And it that, was you! That got me thinking about my experience many years ago. In the summer of 1988, I was a high school graduate. That's what they say, Tim. Graduate. Graduate? I am originally from northwest Indiana, but I was driving to my grandparents' home in southwest Pennsylvania to move in with them for a while. I had just recently acquired a 1980 Pontiac Grand Prix, Tim. Wow. A huge Grand Prix? Yes. That his dad had picked up from a used car dealership Mm. long before the advent of True Car, Tim. So you know what? They didn't get the best deal. Probably not. From the very first day, I had troubles with overheating due to a blown head gasket. Oh, I now hate it when they're blown off. off. Yeah. This car was powered by a Buick-built 231 CI V6. Sounds important. I don't know what any of that means. Mm-hmm. I prefer the V8. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're refreshing. Mm-hmm. I was soon after to learn this is one of the worst engines ever produced by General Motors. What? Shame on you, GM. Yeah. Anyway. That summer, I was trekking across Ohio on the turnpike when suddenly the engine just stopped. What? And I had to pull over. The engine was not overheated. This was something entirely different. Hmm. It simply would not start. Hmm. There were no cell phones back in those days, Tim. What? I know. I can't believe that that's true. I don't I just lost that. all credibility with the story. Yeah. I just stood there next to my car, helplessly watching traffic go by, hoping to get lucky. You're looking for sex while trying no, to No, no, for, for an Ohio State trooper, oh, Tim, to rescue. To have sex with? Right. To, no, to oh, rescue him. Okay. Instead, a lady who lived in a house on a frontage road running parallel. No, no. Oh. Uh, this lady who lived in a house on a frontage road running parallel to the turnpike came to the fence line of her backyard with a cordless phone, Tim, mm. and asked me if I would like to call for help. This is what I did. I reported my breakdown in an approximate location. Then I waited. I waited. And I waited. Mm. And I waited. No reception. I waited for a very long time. Mm. Then, finally, a flatbed truck pulls over behind my car and a man gets out. From the start, he apologizes to me with deep sincerity that it took him such a long time to respond to my call. This is what had happened. Someone had borrowed his truck without his knowledge, without his consent, Tim. Mm. He was unable to respond to my call until another mechanic arrived at the garage in his own truck. The man who was to help me then asked to borrow that truck so that he could respond to my call. That's what took him so long to get to me. I see. So far, the story's not very gripping in the world of paranormal, Tim. I'm hoping it picks up some steam. Hoping he gets lucky with the mechanic. Are you ready for this one? Yeah. <clears throat> With the hood open, he inspected my car's engine. I bet he did. It was getting fuel, Uh so that wasn't the problem. He opened up the distributor cap to see why the engine was not making any spark. Dirty mechanic. The reason then became obvious, Tim. Yep. The rotor underneath the distributor cap was crushed into dozens of small pieces. <laughs> what? <laughs> crushed! Like your spirits, Tim. Well, Let me explain what this busy. thing does, he says. The rotor is a plastic disc, somewhat <laughs> of a pear shape, and it spins around and around, and the metal tip of the rotor sends the high voltage to the other metal tips. Wow. On the underside of the distributor cap. Oh, that's From there, the electricity is sent to each spark plug via the plug wires. No. Suddenly we become like all about cars. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Car Talk. Again, the plastic rotor <clears throat> was crushed. No! 
smashed into multiple pieces. The man told me that he would probably need to make a special trip back to the garage to find a rotor. Bet he did. That would fit my car's engine. Bet he wanted to fit. Because this part is not a universal fit for all engines of every make and model of automobile. Before leaving, he looked into the storage bins on the side of the borrowed truck to see if he could find any rotors. I bet he did. Inside Hmm? of one of the storage bins, Tim. Yeah. There was a lone box. Yeah, big box. It was filled with dead baby parts. Gonna fill that box. It was a what? rotor. It was a rotor. <laughs> and he couldn't believe it either. It huh? was a rotor specific oh. for my car's engine. What? This specific part would not have been in his own truck mm. had he been able to drive. He replaced the damaged rotor oh. with a new one. Ta-da, it says, Tim, with an exclamation point. Shana! Magic! The engine started up as it should have. I reached my destination in Pennsylvania without any further incident. I'm looking forward to your show about Enfield Poltergeist on Coast to Coast. And that comes from Jeff Matthews. Did you do a show about Enfield Poltergeist? I did on uh, Saturday night. Oh, good. You know, we did the guy lying play for who passed away on April 8th. Uh, Last week, we played Uh the rerun of his one and only appearance on our show. Mm -hmm. But this past Saturday on Coast to Coast AM, I actually talked to uh, Roz Morris and Richard um, Gross. Richard Gross. Right. Uh, They were two eyewitnesses to the actual Enfield Poltergeist case. So it was pretty cool. Great, great episode. Please read. That's what this email says. Oh, well then. Please read. Guten Morgen, Herr Schrader. Oh, guten Morgen, My name is Victor. I'm a law enforcement officer in Kansas. I didn't do it. Uh Uh Uh-huh. I I clean piss test for last three months. I have a story, or rather an event involving a story, Hmm. that has caused an effect on my wife for the past two years. Hmm. My wife and I used to watch a lot of thrillers on tv mainly psychological thrillers with endings neither one of us could see coming Hmm. one day i read a story online and i related the story to my wife as it was an interest we both shared the story goes as follows Mm -hmm. there was a teenager who was at a football practice and during the practice he had a head collision which caused him to go unconscious he eventually woke up and was okay and went on to live his life He graduated high school, went off to college, got a good job, got married, and had kids. He overall was living a happy life. But for some reason, he always felt a bit off. Mainly, he felt out of reality. One day, he woke up with EMS over him asking if he was okay. He got up, and there he was, Tim. Still on the football field. What? EMS advised him that he had been unconscious for 15 minutes. And they were concerned he wasn't going to wake up. This messed with him as in those 15 minutes, he had lived years in this dream state and even had a family. He remembered his wife and kids and still to this day is severely depressed as he had truly believed he had lived this life just to be woken up and continuing his life as a teenager. Well, as soon as I told my wife this story, she had a severe panic attack and said she felt her life is a dream. And one day, she would wake up, and myself and our son would be just a figment of my imagination. Two years later, and still to this day, she lives in a constant state of anxiety and deja vu. She still believes that everything that is happening is just a dream, and feels like every moment that happens has happened before. I never meant to scare her to the point of this mental state to be changed, and I always regret telling her the story. We have seen multiple psychiatrists and have spent a lot of money trying to find a fix, but no one has ever heard of this happening to someone, and it seems they don't believe her. I'm wondering if you have ever heard of anything like this, and if so, what can be done to have my wife back to my happy, normal woman that she was before? I love her with all my heart, and I really wish She did not have to live in this constant state of anxiety and deja vu. I try to tell her that this is real and we will never disappear. And she is living life and she just can't grasp that. She is a very strong woman at hiding this, but I I still see it in her eyes at certain moments. Lots of things set off her anxiety and distort her sense of reality, like watching certain movies, shows, video games, or hearing or reading stories that are psychological in nature. Thank you for your time. Well, Victor, um, is it EMDR? 
Eye movement, uh, direct something or other. What 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 is it, Tim? The eye, rapid eye movement thing. E M. Uh, I, I know yeah, what you're EMDR talking about. Yeah, treatment. Yeah, yeah. E M. Like Edward, Mary, David, Robert, EMDR treatment. Please look into that. She is suffering from a form of PTSD. And I believe that this EMDR treatment may be able to help. I I just, I believe that might be your answer. So please, Victor, get that checked. I was going to say, there's something going on with her level of anxiety is so high that she needs to seek some sort of uh, psychological help. Well, they say she she has been, but they can't beat this. But I think the EMDR might be the way to beat this because it, it resets the mind. So check it out, please, and let us know how that works. Dear Dave, I came home from work tonight and tried that mirror concept you and your guests talked about on Friday's show. I arrived home at around 8.30 p.m. It's dark outside. I have one window in the bathroom. I used my phone app flashlight partially to allow for a little bit of light in the room. I set the phone timer for five minutes and locked eyes with myself in the mirror. I admit I was afraid and unsure. As time went on, I noticed small ripples in my reflection as I tossed up as if I tossed a pebble into a pond to disrupt my reflection. The ripples appeared on the side of my right face along my beard. I also noted it looked like I was wiggling my ears and moving my eyebrows at various times when I was not. I was frozen as if I were hiding and not moving a muscle. I couldn't tell if the light was just playing tricks with my eyes or not, but once I heard my timer go off, I immediately turned on the lights separately I sent you two emails of interest regarding my time living in my fraternity house at the University of Illinois and something I saw a while back in vacation in Hawaii. This one instance, I'm convinced, was a shadow person. The other, well, so many people have passed through the same house since 1932. It could be all of that energy. I sent those emails back on March 13th of 2017 and February 23rd of 2018. Thank you and Tim for the great shows. My favorite guests include Jeff at Christmas time and your lawyer buddy. I've heard twice now on True Crime Tuesday. Lastly, I was a little kid when you and your friend uh, when your friend was murdered. It was one of the first cases I remember from ABC News in Chicago. I remember my mom felt horrible and sick and she was sympathetic to your friend. Nobody deserved that fate. I agree with your views about what should have happened to those killers and that comes from Jim in Springfield. Well, Jim, we may have uh, read those stories. I don't know. I don't know. I can here. Let me let me do this because I care, Tim. Yeah, I'm a carer. I hear that. Let me see. I'm going to try to pull up his email address. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh huh. I see one email, and it says uh, "Holiday episode with Jeff," and just that he enjoyed that episode. Hmm. So I'm guessing, I'm, if I were a betting man, if I were a betting man, that we read those stories. But I'm trying one more option here because that's that's how I work, Tim. Okay. I'm looking in the unread email. Oh, guess what, Tim? What? I just found one. <gasps> Did you? It's in the scary real life tales envelope. Dear Dave, I started listening to your show once I heard you both on Talk is Jericho. I love it. Gets me through parts of my day at work. My story takes place 11 years ago. Now it would be 12 years ago because of the time that's passed him. Mm-hmm. I transferred to U of I and lived in an old fraternity house. The house was built in 1932 and belonged to our chapter the entire time up until 1999 when it was sold to a housing development. Members usually counted anywhere from 40 to 100 with 30 to 50 guys living in it at one time. After 2000, stories started about strange happenings or unexplained occurrences. From 2000 to 2007, there were an average 15 members with 10 who lived in the house. I generally wrote off any ghost stories as ways to just screw with the new guy. Well, one January night as our heating system kicked on, steam venting, I heard the noise from the bedroom radiator kick in. Nothing out of the out of the norm. But when I noticed it got louder, suddenly I heard a female voice call my name in which I thought the voice was right above me. At the time, I was the only one living on the third floor. There were sets of doors to get onto the floor, which I could hear. And also, sadly, only three females hung out with us at at that time, and they were not at the house that night. I never looked up, and I buried my head until the voice stopped. I decided not to tell anyone for fear of being mocked four years later. While at an alumni golf event, I heard one of the alumni I just met tell me the same exact account, with exception that he was in a room down the hall from mine four or five years after my tale. I thought that 
the odds were just remarkable that someone would ha- happen to have made up the exact same story. Additionally, in the summer of aught seven, my best friend and I were in the house alone. I was upstairs, and he was down in the main room watching the big screen TV. Please note, he looks for rational answers and doesn't make stories up to me. He was just watching TV and saw a shadow pass by from behind. The way the sun was, he thought it was me. He looked up and saw no one. Another shadow passed by, and he looked outside, to which he saw no one. Then he saw it again, and it stayed still. He turned. And he saw no one. He ran upstairs and found me. He was white as a ghost, and he recounted his story. We went downstairs, and I saw nothing. But I remember it was very cold in that room. This was unusual for a hot summer day in a house with no air conditioning. There had been speculation on my behalf that with the low membership and the house falling on hard times that it was one of those three past individuals, a chapter advisor, a house mother, and a porter. All three had long passed away. Ghost stories have since fallen off with membership totaling 100 guys, and our alumni chapter bought the house in Urbana, Illinois. And that, again, from Jim in Springfield, Illinois. Weird stuff. Yeah. People are going to have a hard time sleeping tonight, Tim. Yep. But they don't have to. Why is that? Because, Tim, we're working with Zipa. Oh, yeah. Zipa.com. Listen, Zipa is something that Tim and I feel very strong about. And Listen, you can ignore all the rest of these silly stories and news stories and everything, but just take our word for this, please. We're trying to save lives here. So is Zipa. And Zipa is something that is going to change your life. Zipa, which is happy Z spelled backwards, is a boil and bite mouth guard with patented tongue strap, the Zipa band, that's designed to eliminate snoring. With two key features. Every other snoring device sold on the market only has one feature. Either they advance the lower jaw or they stabilize the tongue. Zipa does both by advancing the lower jaw and stabilizing the tongue. There are no other snoring solutions like this in the world. Dave, what does this have to do with me? I'm fine with snoring. I don't care. And my wife has gotten used to it. She has not. No. And you are eventually going to push her or him out of your room because of your snoring patterns. Their goal in partnering with our show is to help you because Zipa is looking to connect with you, our listeners. They want to help you. They want to help save lives and save relationships. Zipa is committed to saving lives of millions who have undiagnosed sleep apnea. All right? Just listen to this. They're guaranteed for a full 90 days. They stand behind every Zipa product sold. If for any reason you aren't happy with the product, return it for a full refund. They have a zero-hassle money-back guarantee. They have a five-star customer service program. They have a passion and drive to provide exemplary customer service. And they survey all the customers and strive to maintain the highest reviews and ratings for customer service. Zipa improves relationships. And this isn't just part of the rhetoric. This is the truth. It gets keep couples sleeping in the same bed again, which is a key benefit of using Zipa. To eliminate snoring is to be able to sleep next to the person that you love in the same bed without disturbing their sleep. You only think you're getting a good night's sleep. Right. I guarantee you, I have three friends using this Zipa device. They thought that they're, because they were so used to kind of always being sleep deprived because they snored all night long, which is kind of startling yourself awake and asleep and awake and asleep all night long. They started with the Zipa product because I recommended it to them. And Tim, they all three are telling me they feel better. They feel like they've gotten 10 years of their lives back. They're refreshed. Their mental acuity is better. They're feeling better. They feel healthier than they've ever been. And their wives do notice the difference Hmm. because there's a lot more love going on, brother, because (laughs) they're not always feeling stressed because they can't sleep. And there's here's the one key thing about snorers, Tim. Mm -hmm. They're always the first son of a bitch is to fall asleep. Did you ever notice that? You can never get under the radar and fall asleep first to maybe not have to deal with the snoring. Right. Right? No, no, no. The snorer is like, oh, man, I'm going to have a hard time falling up. <laughs> and then you can't sleep the rest of the night. Well, they fall asleep so quickly because they're so oxygen deprived. Exactly. Yeah. Zipa's made here in the good old US of A, and uh, this is what I want you to know. It's comfortable, affordable, safe, and effective. Zipa is comfortable because it's custom molds to your mouth. The cost is less than $100 and it is guaranteed to work. 
It's been cleared by the FDA as safe and effective. And once you become a member of the Zipa family, all future purchases are lower because of their loyalty program. And if that's not enough to to twist you on this whole deal, they did, um, NBC Nightly News did a piece on Zipa. Without Zipa knowing this, they tested a whole bunch of these, quote unquote, stop snoring devices. Mm -hmm. Only one succeeded 100%. That was Zipa. Yep. So listen, if you've got somebody in your house that hasn't taken the hint, it's time to stop waiting for them to take the hint. Don't let them sleep themselves to death. Get them a Zipa. Save your life, your relationship, and the people's lives you love around you by getting Zipa. I'm very passionate about this, man. At my age, I'm watching friends drop dead left and right from dumb things. And a big portion of it is lack of sleep because if your body's not getting rested, your body's not healing and it's not taking care of itself. And if you have undiagnosed sleep apnea, if you're not taking care of yourself, you can suffocate yourself to sleep Mm -hmm. and to death. So please do us a favor. Check it out. Z-Y-P-P-A-H dot com. Z-Y-P-P-A-H dot com. With a guarantee of for 90 days, you can't go wrong. Try it. I guarantee you after 30 days of using this, you're going to notice your life has changed. And we're going to do you a favor. Use the um, special code DARKNESS at checkout. It'll get you free shipping. So that's an extra little bump. Not only are we going to help you save your life and change your life, we're going to get you free shipping on that as well. Z-Y-P-P-A-H dot com. Take our word for it. Please try this device. Like I said, we're only passionate about items that we bring on the show that we know can make a difference. All right? We could be advertising all kinds of silly nonsense. Mm -hmm. We are very selective in what we bring onto the show. Things that we know we need, things that we know our friends, lovers, workers, buddies, family members need, and we've seen it change their lives. So check it out. And remember, when you support the the, uh, sponsors of our show, you support our show. But more importantly, you're going to change your life. You're going to get into a better place. No matter which one of the advertisers you support, it's going to change your life. That's and also, remember, Zipa is Happy Z, spelled backwards. That's right. Yep. That's pretty cool in itself, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's see. What do we have? A couple more stories to go here, Tim? I think so, yeah. All right. You ready for another story? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, high strangeness in a very strange way. Dave. <clears throat> Jesus. Yeah, there's a... Yeah. No, no, their name on there, just old Dave. Yeah. Love the show. I've been a fan for many years. With your journeys into the weirdness of reality, I figured you and Tim might find what I have to share a bit interesting, if not frightfully entertaining. <laughs> Do they really add the laugh in there? No, I just threw that in. Oh. It's, it's free. It's, oh, okay. it's, yeah, it's, again, us giving a little bit back. Oh, a creative license. What you're about to experience is a paranormal phenomena unlike any other. There are no smoke and mirrors, no tricks of any kind. What you will hear is genuine and truly mind-bending. Truth is stranger than fiction sometimes, and this is one of those times, Tim. Mm. That's what they're guaranteeing us right at the start of this email. Okay. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm psyched. Okay. I'm basically the human telepathic equivalent to a ghost box. Entities of various types and intentions manifest themselves through my speech The type of specters that come through range from ghosts to alien-sounding beings to some that I have no clue as to what they are. Fortunately, they can't be heard in the course of a normal conversation. My voice has to be recorded. Then the playback slowed down. And that's when they come through, Tim. No, this is not a case of pareidolia. The evidence goes far beyond anything pareidolia could ever possibly explain. I've tested this on multiple recording platforms with the same positive results every time. I discovered this ability about five years ago and have amassed a significant amount of data. My ability is on demand. I can replicate this phenomena anytime, anywhere. I have a YouTube video that's a prime example I'm in my car driving around blathering about nothing in particular, but what they had to say is of particular interest. The link to my YouTube channel is below, Tim. So maybe we'll share that. Maybe. Hmm. No special preparation is required for a bit of simple meditation does tend to bring more entities forward into communication. All you need is me and a digital recorder. I'll tell you right now, however, there is no Tupperware party. There's no Tupperware party? I don't follow that. Some of these entities can be quite belligerent. 
Oh, maybe they're saying like this. This is just like a Tupperware party. We're not just going to go and mingle with uh, Happy Housewives. We're, we could get some malevolent spirits involved. Oh, yeah, right. Some of the I don't know if you've ever been to a Tupperware party, but they can yeah. turn kind of catty and bitchy. So really, kind of same thing. I think some yeah. of these entities can be quite belligerent. With many of them asking for help or wanting to escape from something. Many know me and call me out by name. Many come through making various statements, some significant and some random. Others come through to say, hello, thank you, or whatever. (laughs) The video I uploaded is captioned throughout. I've looped many of the segments to give the viewer a chance to grasp what is being said. There are so many other dynamics involved with this phenomena. Too many for me to go through here. What's in play here truly defies the laws of physics in so many ways. I'll get into more details later on. In the meantime, one thing to consider is the idea of psychic ability as a technological phenomena. If given proper acknowledgement of what it is and its underlying potentials, the implications can be significant, especially in the field of artificial intelligence, as an example, Tim. Hmm. I sincerely hope you find this worthy of further inquiry. To be quite honest, I tend to get a bit overwhelmed by it all sometimes, and putting this out there, I hope, will assist in my own discernment process. I really do value your opinion, and I sure would love to hear back from you. On a side note, please click on the About tab at my channel. That will explain the rather unusual banner and thumbnail image provided courtesy of NASA. And that comes from Anomalous Maximus. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, Tim and I are going to take a look at this and we're going to listen to the audio and then, uh, we may arrange, um, an interview that may or may not ever appear on the show. We may record an episode with him Mm -hmm. and then if if it works on any recording device, that's what we're doing. We're recording this show. So you've got the ability to slow it down. So I say we interview him Mm -hmm. just about his experiences. And then afterwards you go back and you slow down the entire conversation and see if you find anything interesting, Tim. I'm not going to do it because I I have a life. But you, you, Tim, you could do that. Yeah, why should I have a life? Exactly. I'm glad we're both in agreement on that, Tim. Thank (laughs) you for being so easy to deal with. Hi, Dave and Tim. About a year ago, I shared a Bigfoot story with you, and it? I described almost getting killed by a 100-pound rock thrown at my head. Well, I'm here today telling a completely different tale, one of the demonic Over the last couple of months, I've been battling with demons. This last Saturday night, it all came to a head. I was at home alone, never recommended if one is battling a demon, when I heard a noise in my parents' room. It was a loud thud, followed by the sound like tearing paper. I opened the door and turned on the light. There, in front of me, was a Bible. However, there was a page torn out from it. It was one of the pages telling of the resurrection. It's like the demon is telling me there is no hope. Hope you enjoyed this interesting encounter and have a wonderful week. Oh, that's real nice. So today is supposed to be the rapture, Tim. Right. And this guy is having an experience where the Bible's opening and the the page of the resurrection is torn out and all hope is lost. Want us to open our minds for a minute and think maybe Bigfoot threw that at you. Could be. Yeah. Hmm, Maybe Bigfoot's a preacher. Hi, Dave and Tim, and maybe, insert guest name here. (laughs) It's a weird opening. My name is Steve. (laughs) And here are my two tales. This is all I could get out of my niece. Not much. She was a little intoxicated, but her friend was not. About a month ago, her and a friend were driving through Valencia, California. It was near the spot we lost the Fast and Furious actor. She saw what appeared to be a guy with a leather wings on a skateboard moving about two blocks away from right to left. Her friend says there was no skateboard. He was flying. My niece says it looked like the monster from Jeepers Creepers. It didn't fly away. It just vanished. Short and sweet, but here's another one. My wife dragged me and my sister up to Sleepy Hollow two years ago. It was the Saturday before All Hallows' Eve. Anyhow, we were walking through the famous cemetery where Irving is buried. I came along a crypt with a window that has lead and colored pictures of Jesus on the far side of the crypt. I was wondering how the painting was lit up. I could see it clearly from the window into the crypt. I gestured to my sister to come closer. You see, my sister came with us, but she was not with us. She just kept staring at her phone all day. I said, come here, you got to see this. No, I'm fine, she replied. I, being the younger brother, age 45, decided to chide her into coming over. Don't be scared. 
Just get over here. At that moment, she received a text. I gave a big sigh. What's it say? She replied, it says, don't be afraid. Who's it from? She says, no name or number. It just says unknown. She shows me the text. I let out a, huh. When she goes to show my wife, it vanished from her phone. She's positive. She never erased it. That's all for now. Be safe, brothers in the paranormal. As everyone else says, I got more stories, but no computer. Peace. (laughs) Well, thank you. That was a pretty good one. I like that story. Thanks for sharing that with us. And thank you all for sharing your tales with us. We appreciate it. Remember, you can always email me your stories, dave at darknessradio.com. Hello, Dave and Tim. I'm a longtime listener of your show and spin a lot of nights listening. I think people are using their uh, voice to text oh, yeah. too often. Yeah, okay. I get a lot of these emails that, that, that are written like this. Mm-hmm. I'm a longtime listener of your show and spin a lot of overnights listening. And I thought that all right, you and letter describing my bunk bed tale. Do you see how this isn't working? Great. Yeah. yeah. It all started in 1998. It was about 10 p.m. I was playing the classic game of GoldenEye. Sitting on the top bunk of my bed, I had one of those old TVs you had to turn on with the pliers to turn the channels, sitting on the tall dresser between TV and the bunk bed. What the space about five feet in between. I was playing GoldenEye, trying to get the best time on faculty to unlock invincibility mode, when I notice a human shape standing in front of the TV and the bunk bed. It was so close to me, I could not move. I felt like if I would have moved, it would move Whitney. I think it's supposed to be with me. Yeah, uh, but I'm just reading it so people understand what we have to deal with. Maybe Whitney was moved, yeah. though. Yeah. I never know. Yeah. They had that predator outline like in the movies, and it's still about six feet tall, very slim, and looked at like static that you see for one of those old televisions when the cable go out. I was so afraid the only thing I can do what was questionable is call my little brother to come into the room and tell him to turn on the lights. As he ran into the room and turned on the lights, it disappeared, and that was the last time I seen something like that. Thank you for reading this. Your invisible friend Keith from Louisiana. P.S. I miss the bumper music. The From Tim. He sent me on an amazing journey into different music genres. Thanks. Hmm. Well, thank you, Keith. Yeah, thank you, Keith. All right. Well, that's it for this week. We will be back next week with more of the best in Paranormal Talk Radio with your stories and supernatural news. We've got True Crime Tuesday on Tuesday. (laughs) Let's see how that works out, Tim. see that. And then Wednesday and Friday, we're back with brand new episodes this week. Thank you for tuning in. Share the darkness. Tell your friends, family, relatives. Put it on social media. Get our show out there. Let more people know about it. We are Beyond the Darkness. I'm Rita Foley with an AP News Minute. The man Nashville police say was a hero when a gunman opened fire at a Waffle House killing four people says he's not a hero. He just wanted to live. I was just kind of like, he's going to get us either way or he's going to get me either way it goes. So I was just waiting for an opportunity. I was just waiting for a chance. James Shaw Jr. tells the Today Show he wrestled the gun away from the shooter who then ran off. Police are still looking for him. Some good news now. Britain's got a new royal baby. Prince William's wife, Kate, has given birth to an 8-pound, 7-ounce baby boy. The boy is fifth in line to the throne. We don't have a name yet. President Trump meets with the French president today. They will dine tonight at George Washington's home in Virginia. Americans overwhelmingly believe teachers don't make enough money, and half say they'd support paying higher taxes to give teachers a raise. These are the findings from a new poll from the Associated Press and the NORC Center for Public Affairs Research. I'm Rita Foley.